now we're in a bustle. How lewd. Okay, so here's the thing. Hunt Showdown's a really fun game. It's great when you're winning, or at least shooting lots of people and getting into cool gunfights, but it can also be intensely frustrating. Long streaks of losing, not doing a lot of killing, they happen kind of frequently, even at the highest levels of play. I don't upload Hunt all that often, so when I do, you're usually gonna see the highlights, right? I obviously don't get seven kills every game. You're typically gonna see the cool stuff, not the matches where I whip my first shot and get my head blown off immediately, but sometimes I can show both in a single video, and that's what I'm gonna try and do here. Good games that maybe didn't have the ending I wanted, that we can learn from and discuss what went wrong and why. Oh, and instead of giving you my live reactions, because I didn't record my own I audio, the, I can talk about everything in post with the benefit of hindsight. Right. At least some of this video, we focused on the Death's Herald skins, just because they're sexy and new, but as I sit down and talk about this first gameplay, I don't know yet if I'll keep the entire video just focused on the Veterly Marksman, or maybe work in some other guns for variety as well. Regardless, this gameplay is Veterly Marksman, a weapon you saw me use against Gunsmack and Vombus to great effect a month ago, and as I think I demonstrated back then, it's extremely good. High velocity ammunition takes it from, I believe, 350 meters a second to around 600, which is a gigantic difference, especially for a scoped weapon. I mean, it's almost doubling the speed of the round, taking it from essentially compact ammo velocity to LaBelle smokeless gunpowder velocity. Now, obviously, the round itself doesn't hit anywhere near as hard as a LaBelle, but if you're clicking heads, it doesn't really matter, and that's what the Veterly Marksman is. It's a head clicker, and at 600 meters per second, you don't have to lead as much, and you're going to pop a lot more domes. You just can't shoot through walls like you could with FMJ or long ammo. So, playing random trios in this one, and the boss is actually going to spawn here at Mob Battery. Took the opportunity to secure the area while my teammates dealt with the boss itself, and almost immediately ran into an enemy team. That's where we find ourselves now. I'm getting shot at by a dude with a spark with incendiary ammunition. I think it was a cane, the caveman looking dude, and uh, I had to run away. Got a little bit spooky there. They had to have spawned south of Goddard in the spawn directly north of us. They're, they were too close and on us too quickly otherwise. Sometimes I impress myself. Like that was a filthy flex shot. I mean, there's no other way to put it. That was just dirty. Um, I don't hit shots like that all the time. I wish I hit them more often, but uh, that was pretty sexy. I'm not gonna lie. So after killing Lulu the prostitute, and yes, that was a prostitute that I just murdered, I... I'm trying to figure out where the next guy is. And I saw the cane on the stairs, body shot him, he must have already been tagged. It was not a headshot, and Veterly Marksman doesn't deal that much damage to the body at that kind of range. Um, so he must have already been tagged before, and it's down to a 1v3. Pretty good situation for us at the start. Two of them are down. I'm gonna flare out a little bit here. I don't want to stay in the same spot. I've held that angle for a while. I have peaked it, and I got tagged. Took about half my health. In fact, I'm already down to one medkit at this point. So, a little bit of repositioning, and that's one of the important things as a sniper or really any rifle player. You do not want to be peeking the same angle over and over again because especially good players, but really anybody, can punish you more easily. Repositioning, rotating, those kind of elements are extremely important in any first-person shooter, but especially a, a game like Hunt. So I've got a scope, and I know at some point he's going to want to rotate to his friend's body and potentially get a res. And if I'm no longer at the corner, then he's not going to know where I am. He might think I went back inside. 
he might say, okay, I have an opportunity to save my teammate. I'm going to take it. And sure enough, I see her rotating over here. Now, I don't know for sure that she's going to the body, but I have a feeling she's going to stand still for something. I'm not going to pull the trigger yet. Now I will. She goes for the res. Super easy headshot. Maybe a bit presumptuous of her to think that she could get a res so easily down 1v3. But I think some players just, I mean, she was kind of in a bush. I could see why maybe she thought that was the right play. But regardless, she went to the Ronda Rousey School of Head Movement. Edmund T taught her everything she knows. Uh, she needed to move her head a lot more, a lot more, if she wanted to make that kind of play. And yeah, when you are resing a teammate, you can move your camera around. You can make it more difficult for someone to kill you when you go for that res. It's kind of what I'm going for here, actually. And honestly, one thing that I've noticed when I watch back my own gameplay is I do play a little bit too twitchy, a little bit too, like, spammy in terms of my jumping and all that. People wonder why you do that. Part of it is to keep loose. Part of it is simply because the more you move, the harder it is to get domed. And it's really kind of that simple. But there are limits to it in Hunt. Uh, one of the more recent changes was you spam jump a lot, you get slowed down. And you actually saw some of the people I shot in my last early Marsman video die because of that. They were jumping too much. They got slowed down. They became an easy headshot. So there's a third player up, and it's actually going to be the Kane who I killed on the stairs. I think he got necromancered by the chick I just killed going for the other res. And so it's a now another 1v3 situation. And Mr. Caveman is going to run all the way to the edge of the map and set himself up over there to hopefully at some point help out his teammates. For some reason, we didn't banish... Um, I think my teammates just came out when they heard all the gunshots and decided not to banish. I think they probably should have done so, simply because we're going to want Darksight at some point and getting a better lay of the land will only happen once we've banished and the assassin's down to 100% in terms of that banishment we grab a bounty. But I know that the caveman is out there somewhere. At this point, I don't think I knew exactly who it was. I don't even think we knew that caveman was up. We're kind of confused on who's shooting at us because there's only one gun. So it kind of has to be either a solo or the last man from this team. But I don't even know how she got the res, honestly. Like, the, where he died was really bad. Like, he died in a really bad spot on the stairs of that tower outside Maw. So it was interesting to see him survive. Regardless, we're going to push in and surround him. And this is why 1v3 situations are so difficult in this game. It doesn't really matter how good you are. If you're passive and sitting far back... If you don't hit your headshots, people are going to push in on you, and you're probably just going to die. Even if you do hit your headshots, you can hit two, then you're just, you're literally still down to a fair fight at the end. It's a 1v1 after you kill two people, and killing two people is hard. So 1v3s are hard. I hear the Spectre Compact go off, and I say it's time to push. So get out of flash, realize he's too far away. Definitely should have aimed there. No reason to try for fanning at that distance, especially with the chain pistol. But regardless, caveman's dead. And that 1v3 is done with. That team's out of the picture. Awesome. I am using the chain pistol with FMJ. FMJ is meta. It doesn't matter if you're going akimbo pistols or single pistols. Anything Caldwell conversion, anything that can bring FMJ, Scott Field, you're going to want it. Penetrating walls, penetrating cover is extremely good, and it also increases your headshot range too, so no reason not to bring it on your sidearm, and you're going to see why in a little bit. Notice that the caveman is up, so realize that that guy we just killed is the same dude, and then things open up. Another team showed up to mob battery, trying to steal our bounty. So this is awkward for me. Uh, I'm on the low grounds. I don't really have good line of sight on the people over there, so I'm going to flank and heal up. Don't know what guns his teammates have, so it's one of those situations where you kind of have to use a med kit because you don't know if you're going to run into a Sparks or something and get one tapped to the chest. Winfield on the other team's engaged, so use that opportunity to push in and hopefully get a headshot from the flank. His movement's too strong. Not able to get him. So I see him retreat, and there's a... Tiny lull in the fighting, so I'm like, okay, well, we just finished banishing. I'm gonna go and get bounty. 
that will end up being a mistake. I didn't realize that my teammates were gonna get just inundated. I wouldn't have done this if I knew they were gonna get shot and murdered immediately, of course. My thinking there was I would get bounty, I would be able to point out exactly where each and every person on the enemy team was, help my team out, teammates out that way, get some snipes, everything would be great. They died as I went back to get bounty, so I shouldn't have gone for it. Barely missed a headshot there. Still gonna two tap her and kill her. But you'll notice I didn't pick up the bounty once I realized my two teammates were dead. I didn't want to give away my position. I want to hold kind of in that space between the bounty itself and where they're pushing in from. Pretty hard though, because it's now 1v3 and resing teammates ain't gonna be a simple task. I have no way to cover the body that I just killed of that tier 3 ghillie chick. So I'll rotate a little bit to see if I can, but I can't really go out into the middle of the field, expose myself too much. She's around that corner still. Winfield guy's putting shots on me. It's probably pretty close to my head. And she's up. Teammates burning doesn't really matter to me. If I win the fight, I'll be able to res them with bounty anyway. Because of the Red Skull revive mechanic, which is a very stupid mechanic, by the way. But I hear steps and frag over the fence. Nana. He pushed over to the beach faster than I thought he would. And so I just miss it completely. Now they're just swarming me. You can hear their steps. They're in the compound now. I'm backing up. And I really didn't want to use that heal there. Perhaps I shouldn't have. But I really don't like running around missing bars. <laughs> really that simple. Yeah, actually looking back on it, I definitely should not have. I, I'm completely out of healing now. This part's sick. Almost got two, dude. Almost got two. Heard their footsteps in there. You'll see the assailant perk at work here. Using throwing knives as a melee weapon. Super cool animation. But that FMJ, being able to fan through walls, mow down the person I already killed once, I believe is who I killed there. And then also tag the other guy and almost kill him too. Man, if I got two fanning kills through the wall there, that would've been insane. But they're all back up, and I've seeded too much ground here. Uh, after getting that kill, I should have reloaded on my push around that corner. And now with the hive behind me, a little bit of panic setting in. I don't think the idea of retreating to use the Veterly Marksman more is such a terrible idea, but it does mean they have bounties now, and it does mean that they're all up. And then I get headshot on a dead sprint from 61 meters away with an uppercut. <laughs> uh, that's Hunt for you. Man, brutal. So, couple mistakes there. And I, I think the biggest one was going for bounty when I could have been providing fire support for my teammates. The idea of it at the time didn't seem like a terrible one, and obviously things are happening very quickly, but I could have been shooting from the compound to help out my buddies, and instead I went to get bounties to hopefully have even better insight which, as we saw, amounted to nothing because they died. <laughs> they just freaking died. Okay, the other issue was when I got those fanning kills with FMJ through the wall, I should have pushed in. Now, there are a couple reasons I didn't. I would have had to have reloaded my conversion pistol, and I don't know if I could have gotten it fully reloaded by the time I came around the corner and pushed inside, but I did have a flash, it ended up going unused, and that's not good. If you have a powerful close range weapon, like the Caldwell Chain Conversion Pistol with FMJ, you land a flash inside, especially if they're going for a res on the teammate that I just killed, I could take over the game 
from there. And I, I think I just ceded too much ground. Watching it back, again, I don't think it's the worst idea in the world to maybe seed some ground and just get Beverly Marksman snipes. But I, I think I had the upper hand. Or as much as of an upper hand as you could possibly have in a 1v3 situation after I got that first kill. Take the flash out, go in, roll the dice, see what happens. I think it's a better play. And it's a it's more of a winning play than retreating and just playing the snipe game for a while. And so I think I, I did make the wrong the wrong call there. Welcome to Quick Play. I hate this game mode. <laughs> it's interesting because from a purely economic standpoint, I highly recommend it, especially if you're struggling or if you're new. It's a great game mode to practice your aim, to get over your fear of PvP, and to just get used to the mechanics of what can be an extremely difficult game. You're playing with house money. You don't lose anything by dying in quick play. Your KD, your stats, all that stuff doesn't matter here. You can't lose money. So you might as well play it if you're starting out and get used to the game. All the cash you earn by becoming the Wellspring is free, and if you win, you get a free tricked out hunter who's leveled up with all the gear you found during the mission. So those elements are great. The downside, for me anyway, is that I find it's usually just not very fun. It's okay if you disagree, but in my experience, 95% of my matches are people rushing the Wellspring, finding a shotgun and traps, then camping inside a building. And in a lot of situations, that can be extremely difficult to overcome if they even remotely know what they're doing. Because you can't control what weapons you get, you can't control the drops you get when you find them on the map. There's a lot of RNG, and those RNG elements are kind of the core of what makes this game mode kind of frustrating for me anyway. You can't control where you spawn. Some people will get double clues immediately in the areas of the map where compounds are very close together, so they inherently have a huge advantage in picking up all the clues becoming the wellspring and setting up for the storm coming their way. Some players will spawn with a supply point right next to them and start out with a Mosin and Dolch, while others are still racking their hand crossbows and silent nagants they spawn in with. That's pure RNG. You're probably going to lose and get kicked back to the main menu if you run into that and haven't found a good weapon yet, unless they're just bad or you land a lucky headshot. I just think Bounty Hunt is a better design game mode, even though camping can be a problem there as well. That said, quick play can be fun, and this was one of those games. So I spawned at Port Reeker, which is actually a fantastic spawn because it typically has two rifts at the start. I picked up one clue and then the other one blacked out, that area of the map grayed out. I had to come south to Darrow and immediately ran into a supply point. Now I have a LaBelle 1886. Now I could go for the Spectre there, shotgun, or, I mean the shotguns are king in this game mode once you become Wellspring and once you are set up inside a compound. Be, like I said, very difficult to push into a shotgun player who knows what they're doing, who has traps up, who's holding those angles. But in this case, I'm not at the wellspring and I realize I'm not going to be it because of the way the map blacked out. Someone else is probably going to get it first. So instead, I'm going to go for long range weapons here and focus on long ammo, getting the headshots, wiping out people before they can get to the wellspring and hopefully just get a bunch of kills. That's kind of the point, right? So I hear ducks go off in the middle of the lake between Blanchett Graves and Lock Bay Docks, and I'm scanning. It's foggy, I'm not really going to be able to see anything, but I know where the clue is, and I know at some point the guy's probably going to head there. If you don't have amazing aim, this is how you can succeed and still get kills. Nothing fancy there. Didn't see his head, but I knew where his body was, and so I could... I had a basic idea of where his head would be as he picked up that clue. But nothing really special there, just a basic ambush. You can see from the way the map grayed out, I knew that people would go to Lock Bay because this is the most northerly location on the map that hasn't been blacked out yet. Someone was going to come along, he made some noise, he aggroed a hive, he let some ducks go off, and from that point it was a... Uh, Fairly simple thing to just wait, be patient, and then blow his head off when he closed the gap and went for it. So now I need to go south, and I've heard a Nitro Express. I've heard a lot of shots down by Slaughterhouse, so that's probably where the Wellspring is going to end up. I only have two clues, and I'm not going to pick up the Lock Bay one after just killing someone there. It's a great way for myself to die, so 
I'm just gonna traverse the map and get to where the action is. Healing Waters Church is usually a hotbed of activity because this is another one of those compounds that spawns with two refs or two clues. And sure enough, I hear footsteps. Also easy. I mean, th that's not really talent, guys. <laughs> he was switching his weapons, he was standing still. Even if you don't have great aim, that's a shot that you could probably land. I hope. <laughs> so close to becoming Wellspring. See a Caldwell rival here, and it's maybe not the worst idea to go for it, but then I realize that Healing Wanderer is blacked out. So I can't pick up the second clue, and there's no point using the shotgun, because I'm not going to be Wellspring. I could push with it, but I think I'm more comfortable with the LaBelle right now. I've done more damage with this thing. A lot of people dead. Two, the three people dead here at healing. So I'd say half the lobby, half the server's dead already. Won't have a crazy amount of people to contend with down there, but that's not really a loot I want to take. It's kind of out in the open. It's foggy, so I could probably get away with it, but regardless, we're going to head south. Try to be Wellspring, but realistically, we're not going to get it. Someone else will. And yes, indeed. Kinjvan21 has it. Let's go fight him at Slaughterhouse, see what happens. So how this works is, whoever's last man standing is the victor of quick play. And in the top left, you see the flame. That's how much time is remaining in the Wellspring. The number next to his name is how long he's had the Wellspring. So he'll earn money for every second that he has it in his possession. Not worried about the money. I'm worried about being the last man standing. He's in the shack. Presumably with a shotgun, that's typically how this goes. Pushing that will be hard. But I have LaBelle 1886. It's a powerful cartridge. There are certain things we can do to make life for him a little bit more difficult. First thing I need to do is worry about the other people. And they're about to make their presence known. Dogs, far side of the compound. So I know a player's coming. I'm gonna be quiet. He has no idea I'm here. Hi, bomb to get him running. Create space for me to climb the ladder safely. Easy headshot. Now this is where things get interesting. I can see him because he's wellspring, but it doesn't give me a perfect representation of where he is. And I'm trying to wall bang him. And now I realize that he also has a high power rifle. I believe that's a Mosin. So also using long ammo. And I just can't hit him with these wall bangs. Uh, there have been some changes to compounds recently that were really good for the game. I heard a chick around the corner. My fourth headshot. <laughs> Landed some nice shots this game. But there have been some compound changes that have been really good for the game, but I don't know all of them yet. And I think there might have been some changes to Slaughterhouse inside the building he's in, actually in that very corner. I think there's hay bales and some stuff that got added, but I don't know if it's possible or not possible to, to wall bang through there, if the hay bales give him more protection or what the deal is there. But regardless, I think I was just missing. And I realized I just have to go in. Like, he's got long ammo. It's not as terrifying to push against as a Crown and King or a Spectre. We're gonna try to make this a 1v1. Still going for the wall bank, because I don't want to give him a fair fight. But I'm quickly running out of ammunition, and that is a problem. Ah, like, ah, I don't even hear him moving. 
That was the weirdest thing about this. I could not hear him moving. Got a sticky bomb and got a fire bomb. So might be able to get him out of the corner. Not a great throw from my end. Wait, was that a flash? Dude, that was a flash. I did not see that during the game. That's the first time I've seen that watching it back now. That's huge. I mean, that's that's GG right there, essentially. If I see that flash, I throw it in the corner and he's dead. That sucks. <laughs> I didn't realize that was there. I completely missed that. And this is where I'm incredibly confused. Because he, he looks like he's inside. But I can't see him in that corner. I can't do it. There's the bed sheet that's draped down. But I can't see his feet below. I'm looking. I'm not hearing him move around. Thought about pitchfork rushing. I kind of wish I had. That would have been a hilarious end. But now we've got other people pushing in from the other side of the compound. So we're surrounded. There's actually two players that aren't the wellspring near me as well. Threw a flash in. He picked that one up. I think that was the one that I should have gotten myself. Another flash. I would have been wall banging there or shooting through the bed sheet to try to get him. But I didn't have enough ammo at this point to be throwing up prayers. And I think he's outside at this point. I think the, the wellspring is outside on the far wall. Choke. Well, kind of. Heavy knife sucks. That's one problem. It's not good. I would much rather have a normal knife. Charge attack for heavy knife is bad. But I definitely missed something that I should not have missed there. Uh, more unfortunate was that I got tagged by the guy with his Mosin. Or Labelle or whatever long ammo he had. He was shooting at the guy with the dualies, And he hit me instead. <laughs> so all she had to do was turn around at that point. Survive the heavy knife strike. And shoot me. And uh, Mr. Kingsvan21. Gonna be the champion. Not sure he got a single kill that game. <laughs> Fantastic immolating at the end. So, what I should have done differently there, for sure, is once I got into the compound and killed the two people outside it, I think it was reasonable to assume I was the last person alive at that point. There ended up being two more players, not counting the Wellspring. One of them we didn't even see. We just heard him shoot at the end. But yeah, my top priority should have been to look for throwables that would get him out of that corner and moving. Once he's no longer in his safe location where he only has to worry about one angle, that's when it becomes a lot easier to kill him. And even if it's not me killing him, it's one of the other uh, stragglers that comes in later, that's fine. Once that fight is moved out into an open plane or a more open area where it's not a 1v1 where he just has to look in one direction, then it becomes a lot more fair for me and it becomes a lot more likely that I win my fight. In an ideal world, I would have had a lot more ammo there, just keep wall banging him, shooting past the bed sheet. I would have tagged him. He would have died eventually, but didn't have enough ammo to do that. So the smart play there is look for the flashbangs, look for the frags, look for the dynamite that if they won't kill him outright, will blind him and allow me to push in and finish him off for good. I think that was my biggest mistake there. And it cost me a free hunter in a game that was otherwise very good. I landed some nice shots. So hope you guys enjoyed this look at hunt showdown a little bit different than what we're used to, but I think the post game commentary can be fun and hopefully a little bit more educational than some of my other videos for it. And if you'd like to see more, let me know. I'll see you guys in the next video. Plenty more Warhammer 2 and Warhammer 3 content coming very soon. See you guys in the next one.